All right, so at this point, I'm sure a lot of you guys have already seen the details and animations for the 8th anniversary LRs floating out there. Uh, honestly, I was out last night and I didn't really have a chance to check these guys out for myself until this morning. So if you guys happen to already know what these guys do, then there's really no reason to continue watching. But with that said, with that said, if you want to see my reactions to the animations and the new mechanics and all that stuff, then definitely continue watching. So with that said, we are going to be talking about the uh, new LR GT Goku and Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta as well as the LR Super Saiyan 3 Goku and uh, Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta for Dokkan's 8th Anniversary Dual Dokkan Fest. And like I said, there are a bunch of new mechanics for both of these units and uh, I actually haven't seen the animations at all yet so you'll also get my genuine reaction to those as well. So uh, let's pop over to the uh, official JP Dokkan Twitter page and we'll start with the animations first and I believe this is for the side units which is the Gotenks and Piccolo and also the um, Shadow Dragons right so I'm going to just pause my music here, and let's get it. Man, yo, that last animation just reinforces why I love Piccolo so much. Um, yeah, dude, if these are the animations for the side units, for the, you know, non Dokkan Fest units on this banner or on these banners, that's a good sign. Uh, that's a good sign because these guys look really, really good for side units. And uh, yeah, yo, it's setting my expectations for the LRs really high right now. So I love these. It's really, really good. Now let's move on to the main event. So I think we're starting here with the yeah, Super Saiyan 3 Goku and Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta. Here we go. Let's go. ジメルゾ。どうよしろ。元気玉の用意だ。あ。みんな。俺に元気を可能な限り分けてくれ。頼む。うわ、来た来た。これがなんとか少しでも時間を稼ぐ。
telling you, I love that KO screen. I love that KO screen. It's so good. Um, yeah, I mean, as a whole, it's basically what I expected, right? I mean, just based on like what we know from the anime, um, this is what I thought the animations were going to be. But as always, you know, with the anniversary units, they executed it really, really well. Really, really well. So, um, yeah, no, the animations are amazing. They they look very, very clean. And, uh, you know, this last, like, uh, I guess it's called finish skill, finish attack, which we'll get into details about in a, in a little bit. Um, uh, it looks looks dope, man. It's it's really really well done. It's really well done. It gave me gave me chills, honestly. Um, I was getting like goosebumps as I was watching, and uh, yeah, what else is there, is there to say, man? They they killed it. So that is the first of the two LRs. We still got one more to go, and uh, I think this one's gonna be even better. Honestly, I, I'm expecting even more from this one, or at least on the same level, but. I don't know, I just feel like that last attack is going to be even better. So here we go, here we go. This is the LR Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta and uh, JT Goku. Enjoy. まだ死ねねえな。おめえをやっつけるまではな。宇宙のみんな。ほらに元気を分けてくれ。サンキュー。宇宙のみんな。行くぜ。Yo, I was so right. I was so right about the finish attack, man. It's <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. Like just when you think that Dokkan can't possibly do any more with the animations, they always find a way. It feels like they always find a way to like still make you know like source material that we're all very familiar with, right? That we all like kind of expect to be in the animations. Um they somehow add some kind of like Dokkan spin to it to make it just like feel new again, to feel fresh again. And uh, I love it. <laughs> I love it. These animations are amazing. Um, yeah, I don't want to spend too much time here though because we're already like 10 minutes to the video and I could say more things. I could react more, but I think it's time to talk about what these units do. So uh, let's pop over to 
Um, well, originally I was going to use this page, which is the Dokkan Info website. Uh, let me just actually turn on the music again. There we go. The Dokkan Info website, right? But um, this is a direct translation from Japanese using uh, Google Translate. And, you know, some of the like wording is kind of weird and I don't exactly understand what it's trying to say. So instead, what we're going to do instead is uh, go over to the Twitter page of the homie Goresh, who has so kindly provided us with the English translations for both the LRs as well as their banner units. So uh, yeah, of course, thank you and shout out to Goresh. And uh, yeah, let's let's jump into it. So we're starting here with the LR Super Saiyan 3 Goku and Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta. And uh, let me just make this a little bit bigger. There we go. So this is Universe's Last Hope, Super Saiyan 3 Goku and Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta. Leader skill is Power of Hope or Final Trump Card. Category key plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 170%, plus an additional HP attack and defense plus 30% for characters who also belong to the Connected Hope or Majin Buu Saga categories. Uh, super attack, 12 key, combined rival attack raises defense, and this is stacking, and raises attack for one turn and causes colossal damage. And then the 18 key super greatly raises defense, stacking, and greatly raises attack for one turn and causes mega colossal damage. So he's, uh, or this unit is basically stacking defense, and the attack is only for one turn. But uh, of course, as you guys know, you know, defense is, in my opinion, more important than attack for the most part. So um, that's definitely a good thing. And then the passive here is attack and defense plus 200%. Gains an additional attack and defense plus 50% when HP is 50% or more. Gains an additional defense plus 100%, an additional key plus 1 when collecting key spheres while in the first slot. In a turn, gains an additional attack plus 100%, an additional key plus 2 when collecting key spheres while in the second or third slot in a turn. So essentially, they are better offensively in the second or third slot, but as a slot one unit, they get a lot more defense, which is exactly what you want because, you know, an issue with a lot of units is that in slot one, they're not very tanky because they need to launch attacks first before they get a defense boost, right? But with these guys, they are kind of solving that issue a little bit by giving them the additional defense in slot one and then the attack in slot two and or three, right? And then performs an additional attack that has a great chance of becoming a super attack if key is 18 or more, which obviously is not hard to do because of all the additional key from key spheres, and then performs an additional super attack if key is 24. So from my understanding, this unit can launch up to four supers, three from the passive, or I guess two additional from the passive, and then of course the hidden potential system as well. So you got the initial, uh, initial super, and they also got the um, additional attack that has a great chance, which is 70% chance to become a super attack if key is 18 or more. And then you get the guaranteed additional super if key is 24. And then, of course, the possible hidden potential super. So up to four super attacks for this unit. Gains an additional key plus one and chance to perform a critical hit for every super attack performed up to a max of uh, crit hit, uh, critical hit chance plus 50%. So, uh, yeah, that is the passive for the Super Saiyan 3 Goku and Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta, um, looking very, very good. Obviously, I think they're going to hit extremely hard, especially with all the additional super attacks, but on top of that, they're stacking defense, and um, yeah, I mean, they're going to be very tanky in, I'm not even going to say like super long events, because like, they're, they're greatly raising defense on the 18 key, right? So. Even in like medium length events, after a couple of turns, after a couple of attacks, they will be very tanky. And keep in mind, they can launch up to four super attacks, right? So with all those supers, the defense is going to be building very, very quickly. So um, yeah, just the all around, very well rounded unit for sure. And then you have this standby skill, which is very similar to a um, active skill, except it works kind of differently, right? So you pop the standby skill and then what it does is, is uh, it switches your character to standby, which is like this unit, to standby for five turns and accumulates one charge count for every key sphere obtained by allies on your team. And it can be activated when HP is 50% or below or when four or more attacks have been performed in battle 
and four terms, four turns, four turns have elapsed once only. So once again, this unit attacks a lot. So being able to launch four attacks is very easy. And then uh, four turns is not bad either, right? So decent condition. And uh, what happens in this standby for this unit at least is that they can't attack. Okay, they can't attack, they can't perform like normal super attacks as a standby unit. And you also switch over to uh, base Goku and Vegeta instead of the Super Saiyan 3 Goku and Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta. You become base Goku and Vegeta. And uh, as you can see from the passive, it says unable to attack outside of performing a finish. So uh, how do I explain this properly? It's a little bit confusing because it is a very new mechanic. We haven't seen it for other units before, but... Essentially, like I said, this unit cannot attack outside of this one finish attack. So, unable to attack outside of performing a finish, defense plus 250%, guard activated against all attacks for 4 turns from first appearance, changes a type of key sphere uh, at random to rainbow key spheres, gains an additional 8% damage reduction per key sphere obtained, and then attack plus 500% when performing a finish attack. So. Uh, most of this kit right here, most of this passive for the base Goku and Vegeta is to keep you alive, right? They're going to be super, super tanky, even though they're not attacking for the most part. Um, you know, they're going to be super defensively sound so that you're not like taking a lot of damage, even though they're not attacking. And uh, the way this finish works is that in this standby form or standby mode for the five turns, you're getting, as it says, one charge for every key sphere obtained by allies on your team, right? So this also includes um, the off rotations as well, where you don't have this unit on rotation. And uh, yeah, every time you get a key sphere in the standby form with all the units on your team, you're getting these charges for your finish attack, right? And then once you build a certain number of charges, you can use your finish attack. And there's two different ones. Let me just actually disappear for a second so you guys can see the full screen. Uh, there's finish one, which is Spirit Bomb, temporarily gains attack plus 15% per charge counter accumulated and deals ultimate damage to enemy. And this is usable when charge counter is 18, or sorry, 38, at 38 or below. Once again, it's one charge counter for every key sphere you obtain with your other allies and also this unit, I guess, as well. So, um, yeah, if you have 38 or below for your charge counter, then you do the spirit, uh, spirit Bomb. And then for the second finish effect, which is obviously the one you want more because it's it's better, Super Spirit Bomb temporarily gains attack plus 20% per charge counter accumulated and deals ultimate damage to enemy. And this is usable when charge counter is 39 or higher. So uh, yeah, basically the higher your charge counter, the more damage you're doing. And if you're above 39 or you're at 39 or above, then you're doing the super spirit bomb and do doing even more damage and don't forget the attack plus 500 percent when performing a finish attack so that's how this new mechanic works you switch into standby where you can't can attack but you are you know getting a lot of defense being really tanky and then you're building up this charge counter with all the key spheres you're obtaining over the course of these five turns and then when you choose to use your finish attack you do a crap load of damage which is most likely going to kill the enemy but if you don't kill the enemy then you switch back into the uh super saiyan 3 goku and uh super saiyan 2 vegeta after so you basically revert back to the original unit right so um that is the super saiyan 3 goku and vegeta guys uh really really cool unit i i really love the new mechanics um it's something that i don't think anybody really thought of right as far as like when predictions were, were coming out for the anniversary units i don't think anybody quite had something like this maybe something similar something approximating this but not quite like this so it's very unique it's very creative and i just love it man i just love it so yeah that is uh the first unit let's move on to the next one. Oh, uh last thing when you're in the base goku and vegeta form super saiyan becomes experienced fighters and, uh, sorry, no, Super Saiyan and Experienced Fighters become the Saiyan lineage in Toughest Nails because obviously they're not Super Saiyans, they're their base form units, right? So that is the first one. Next up, we have the Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta and GT Goku. 
And a leader skill is Power of Hope or Battle of Fate. Category key plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 170, plus an additional HP attack and defense plus 30 for characters who also belong to the Final Trump card or Shadow Dragon Saga category. Uh, super attacks, 12 key, combined attack, raises atta uh, attack and raises defense for one turn and causes colossal damage. And then the uh, 18 key, greatly raises attack and greatly raises defense for one turn and causes mega colossal damage. So it's kind of reversed here. Uh, where you're stacking uh, attack for the 12 and 18 key as opposed to defense, um, which is what the other unit is doing, right? And then passive is attack and defense plus 200%, gains an additional attack and defense plus 50%, when HP is 50% or more, gains an additional defense plus 100%, and an additional key plus 1 when collecting key spheres while in the first slot in a turn, and then gains an additional attack plus 100%, and an additional key plus 2 when collecting key spheres while in the second or third slot in a turn. Um, performs an additional attack that has a great chance to become a super attack if key is 18 or more, and then performs an additional super attack if key is 24. So up to this point, this is exactly the same passive as the Super Saiyan 3 Goku and Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta. No difference between the two passives, but the last part is a little bit different. You gain an additional key plus 1 and damage reduction plus 10% for every super attack performed max of damage reduction plus 50%. So even though you're not stacking defense, you're not stacking defense on the 12 and 18 key supers, you are getting up to 50% damage reduction, which definitely makes up for the lack of defense stacking, right? It, it, it definitely does. It definitely does. So don't think that this unit is not going to be good defensively because, and trust me, they are. They are. Um, so yeah, that's the passive, and then we have the standby skill, switch to standby, can be used when HP is 50% or below, or when uh, four or more attacks have been received in battle, and four turns have elapsed once only, so same condition, and you switch to standby for five turns. And uh, this standby works a little bit differently, so, oh, I forgot to talk about the links and categories and stuff, or the other unit, didn't I? That's my mistake. Okay, we'll get back to that. We'll get back to that. So, when you do the standby for this unit, you switch over to Super Saiyan GT Vegeta, which you saw in the animation. Um, and then, uh, this one actually does attack, right? He does have a 12 and 18 key super attack. The 12 key greatly raises attack for one turn and causes colossal damage. And the 18 key greatly raises attack for one turn and causes mega colossal damage. And raises super class allies attack by 40% for one turn. And his passive is attack plus 250%, uh, defense plus 150% when HP is 50% or higher, all allies key plus 8, and attack plus 80%. 80%! Revives with 100% HP when this character or another ally gets KO'd once only, and then attack plus 39% when performing a finish. So the finish essentially happens at the same time, as the revival, right? It kind of coincides with the revival skills. So you got a uh, finish right here, uh, revival counter. It's called Super Ultra Spirit Bomb, right? Which is the animation we saw. Conditions able to be used when revival is activated once only. So, like I said, the finish occurs at the same time as the revival and it counters enemy with super ferocious power when this character or an ally is KO'd. Um, so yeah, basically, it's gonna do a boatload of damage. It's gonna hit super, super hard. And, uh, you know, with the stacking of attack on the 12 and 18 key, su 18 key supers as Goku and Vegeta, it's just gonna contribute to this, like, crazy damage. So for the most part, just like the finish attack for the other LR, you're most likely gonna kill the enemy, right? Like, no matter who you're facing, they're most likely gonna be dead. But if they don't die, then I'm pretty sure what happens is you revert back to the GT Goku and Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta. I think that's what happens. I'm not 100% sure about that, but um, that's kind of uh, how these, you know, revivals or uh, standby skills work right there. So uh, there you have it, guys. Let me just quickly go over the links for the first LR because I'm pretty sure I missed it the first time. So uh, the links for... The Super Saiyan 3 Goku and Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta are Saiyan Warrior Race, Golden Warrior, Super Saiyan Experienced Fighters Prepare for Battle, uh, Fierce Battle and Legendary Power, and categories are Power of Hope, 
Honor Trump card, Connected Hope, Majin Buu Saga, Pure Saiyans, Joint Forces, Battle of Wits, Master Evolution, Battle of Fate, Power Beyond Super Saiyan, Bond of Parent and Child, and All Out Struggle. And then for the Super Saiyan 4, Vegeta and GT Goku, the links are... Saiyan Warrior Race, Saiyan Lineage, Experienced Fighters, GT, Prepare for Battle, Fierce Battle, and Legendary Power. The categories are Power of Hope, Battle of Fate, Final Trump Card, Shadow Dragon Saga, Pure Saiyans, Joint Forces, All of Struggle, GT Heroes, Bond of Friendship, sorry, Bond of Parent and Child, uh, Connected Hope, and Powerful Comeback. So those are the Tuol Tuol Del Lars. I have no doubt in my mind that these are currently the two best units in the game. Um, rivaling Piccolo, rivaling the orange Piccolo from the uh, superhero movie. Um, I think better. I think better, uh, especially offensively. Defensively, I think these guys will at least rival him, right? So, uh, they're the best units in the game, man. They're they're the best units in the game. You know, you almost, uh, like, Piccolo was so good. Piccolo was so broken that you almost thought that, like, they couldn't make units better than him for the anniversary, but of course they could, and of course they did. So, these are the two best units in the game right now, no question, no doubt in my mind. And uh, there you have it. There you have it. Now, before we go, we're going to quickly talk about the side units, the banner units. So we got the Piccolo and uh, Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks, whose animation I absolutely love. And uh, leader skill is Gifted Warrior, skill plus 3. HP attack and defense plus 130%. Um, we got the 12, uh, sorry, we got two different super attacks. 1911 key is charging uh, Ultra Boo Boo Volleyball Attack. <laughs> raises attack and causes supreme damage. And then the 12 key is Vice Shout, which raises defense and causes supreme damage. Passive is attack and defense plus 100%, gains an additional. Attack and defense plus 150% when performing a super attack. High chance to randomly, uh, random, oh, to change, sorry, a random type of key sphere to rainbow key spheres, and it recovers 5% HP per rainbow key sphere collected. Gains an additional attack plus 50% and performs an additional attack. It has a high chance to become a super attack when key is 11 or less, and then medium chance to evade enemy attacks when key is 12. So, this um, Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks is better than the EZA Fizz Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks, which is kind of funny. Although, you know, that guy's really old, so it kind of makes sense. But yeah, this um, this Gotenks, I mean, I kind of just see it as a Gotenks unit, but there is Piccolo in there as well. I was kind of hoping that it would be more of just like a Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks without Piccolo. Maybe Piccolo just did like a, you know, unit super attack or something like that, but... It's fine. It's fine. They still have a lot of categories, which was the main thing I was worried about having Piccolo in there. Um, but yeah, they're going to hit hard. Uh, they're going to get some good defense, I believe. Yeah, get some get some solid defense. And of course, they stack defense with the 12 key, so I don't think it's going to be a big issue in longer events. Um, so yeah, also the healing is nice. The healing is really nice. So that is the passive Link's Innocence, Prodigy, Super Saiyan, Solid Support, Over in a Flash. Fuse Fighter and Fierce Battle. And categories are Gifted Warriors, Majin Buu Saga, Joint Forces, uh, Final Trump Card, Joint... Wait, oh, there's two Joint Forces. So, he put Joint Forces in twice by accident. It's okay. Heavenly Event, uh, Interested Will, Fuse Fighters, and Warrior Raised on Earth. Next up, we have the Shadow Dragons. We have uh, Nova Shenron and Ice Shenron. Leader skill is GT Bosses, Category Key plus 3, HP Attack and Defense plus 130, uh, super attack raises attack and defense for one turn. It causes supreme damage with a great chance to stun. And passive is changes AGL and STR key spheres to tech key spheres and attack and defense plus 134%. Gains an additional defense plus 134% when attacking. When collecting three or more key spheres, gains an additional attack plus 134% when attacking. When collecting four or more key spheres, performs an additional super attack when collecting seven or more tech key spheres, and then uh, attacks effective against all types if the target enemy is stunned. So uh, yeah, a lot like the a lot, a lot like the uh, Sin Shenron actually from last year, I believe. You know, in the sense that like you're getting the additional buffs and additional abilities as you get more key spheres and they're changing two types of key spheres so you can expect 
to get a lot of key spheres when these guys are on rotation. So getting seven tech key spheres when you're changing AGL and SDR to tech, I don't think it's gonna be that that hard to do, right? So you're essentially almost guaranteed to get this additional super attack, I think. Maybe. Either way, like you're gonna get a lot of keys, so or a lot of spheres, so um yeah, really good passive right there. I think they might be one of only like two or three units in the game that can change two types of key spheres. There's the Weirus, right? And I can't recall the other one. I think there's one more, but I could be wrong. Either way, changing two key spheres is is great. And uh, you know, on top of that, yeah, you get these big buffs, which is always good to see. And the additional super attack, attacks effective against all types. When the uh, enemy is stunned, they have a 70% chance to stun, so it's gonna happen a lot if the enemy can't be stunned. And their links are Gentlemen, Brutal Beatdown, Cold Judgment, Shock and Speed, GT, Shadow Dragons, and uh, Fierce Battle. And categories are GT Bosses, Shadow Dragon Saga, and Joint Forces. So only three categories, unfortunately. But nonetheless, you know, if you're running them on Shadow Dragon Saga or something like that, uh, they're gonna be a really good addition to that team, which does still need more units for sure. I mean, it's still a bit of a limited category at the moment, but of course, you know, getting these guys and also getting the LR, um, GT Goku, and uh, Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta is going to be a big boost to that category, no doubt. So uh, that's going to do it, guys. That is the video. It went a lot longer than I expected. But uh, I hope, hopefully it was worth it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, you know, the entire process. And uh, once again, man, just a big shout out to Goresh for providing us with the translations. This video would not have been possible without him. So uh, just thank you for that. And uh, yo, for those of you that are summoning on the JP side for this Dual Dokkan Fest, make sure to... I was gonna say make sure to pull them, but I guess you can't guarantee that. So just best of luck. Hope you guys have great luck and uh, do manage to pull them. And uh, I'll probably do a summoning video of my own as well uh, a little bit later, uh, maybe in the afternoon. I'm not sure if I have time today, that's the problem, but I'll try my best, I'll try my best. And uh, yeah, we'll have some fun, do some summons. You guys know, like I don't really, main JP or anything like that. I don't play JP too much, but it's always fun to summon for these anniversaries. So I just, I just do, some, do some fun summons for you guys a little bit later for sure. So that's going to do it guys. That is the video. 30 plus minutes, but once again, it was, it was important information that we had to get out there. So that's it guys. That's all I got to say. Uh, happy anniversary. Enjoy the events. Enjoy the new units. And, uh, yeah, if you liked today's video, then make sure to like the damn video. Sub to the channel if you're new, hit that notification bell so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And until next time, have an awesome, awesome day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Video. Signing out.